Hey, I'm David, and this is Adobe UXP Things You Need to Know number 10. In this episode, we'll learn how to build modal dialogues for UXP plugins. Feel free to watch the video or read the article on my blog. They cover the exact same ground. The link is in the video description. Let's start with some history. Extend Script was the language that we have been using to script Adobe applications literally forever. It was based on the ECMAT script spec version 3, also known as ES3. And that was cutting edge yeah, around the decade 1999-2009. In Trivia Moment, ECMAT stands for the European Computer Manufacturers Association. And it's the organization that has standardized the JavaScript language under the name ECMAScript. And there is a terrific interview with Brendan Eich, who famously has created JavaScript in a hurry in just 10 days. And you can find that in Lex Friedman's channel. Check that out. Trust me, the man is quite something. And even if I've understood like 30% of what he said, it was really a blast anyway. Now, in a way, JavaScript and ExtendScript share a common ancestor, if you will, which is the ES3 spec. But then their evolution diverged. Adobe extended, hence the name, the ES3 spec with extra features, for instance, for XML literal support. While JavaScript went on with ES5, they skipped ES4, and that was an interesting story in itself. But anyway, with ES5, you have JSON support, array methods, ES6 with the new syntax, and so on and so forth. Fast forward to the Adobe Max 2020 conference and the adoption of this new unified UI and scripting engine in UXP. All the extend script extras that we were familiar with are now gone, like disappeared. And this is the price we have got to pay to have a modern JavaScript engine, which is fair enough, if you ask me. And some fellow developers might not have realized this because, frankly, there was a lot to sink in. But probably the most conspicuous feature that's gone missing is the entire script UI class. It has always been the principal tool to build script German windows, both in the CEP era and also way before when the cloud was not really around and all we had was a creative suite. Let's be clear about terminology before going any further so that no matter what your background is, we're all on the same page. In this context, a dialog is an independent window that pops up and can be either modal, meaning that it steals the focus. You cannot interact with any other UI element but the dialog itself, or modal less. The dialog stays around and you're allowed to deal with the rest of the Photoshop interface, no problem. The concept of modal versus modal less UI is present all over in the Photoshop interface. For instance, if you launch an adjustment on a layer, then that's a modal dialog. Uh, but if you create an adjustment layer, then the properties panel is modal less. We used to build modals with script UI windows of type dialog, and in theory also modal less with script UI windows of type palette. But those weren't really supported in Photoshop, they acted weird, and we have been officially advised against their use. And then there was a third type, window of type window, but that was really, really marginal, never seen that much around. So, before CEP came about, Script UI was enough to build rich UIs, such as this one that I created for the Professional Photoshop Scripting book. But as soon as Flash first and then CEP panels landed in Photoshop, Script UI was relegated to simpler dialogues or for backward compatibility only. You may not know it, but also those super handy alert or prompt or confirm dialogues were part of Script UI. And as part of Script UI, they are gone too, with the exception of Alert that has been re implemented in the Photoshop API as Show Alert that is found in the Photoshop object, then App, and then you find the Show Alert method. Works fine, even though uh, it doesn't differentiate between the title and the text. The title is everything that comes before the new line characters. They are both bold, only the title should be just a minor cosmetic glitch that's going to be fixed in the future. Anyway, whatever code we used to write in the recent past to create dialogues, that's gone now. UXP provides alternatives both for modeless windows as UXP panels that I have extensively covered here, 
and modal dialogues, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. Hey, a disclaimer first. UXP is a technology that's under very active development, so the code that I'm showing you may be subject to change in the future. This is the premise of all my work here, given the nature of the topic. Rest assured that I will post updates if and when needed. But that said, uh, there are features that might be already available for you to use, but not really either partially or fully documented yet. And incidentally, this happens to be the case of some dialogues. So I was dubious whether to include them here or not. And I've decided that I will mention them anyway, because in my opinion, it's crucial for you to plan ahead and be informed about the actual um, realm of possibilities, so to speak. Although I would suggest not to use those features yet for the risk of that the API will change is even greater, so be warned. As a general rule, you won't hear a word from me about anything that belongs to the pre-release or that works in beta versions only. Besides breaking all sorts of NDAs, it would just be pointless. Instead, if the feature is already implemented in the Photoshop release version, I might mention and show it essentially to inform you, but deferring for the actual use to some time in the future when the official documentation covers it fully. I have prepared two different UXP plugins to show you a few of the possible ways to use dialogues. One using vanilla JavaScript and the other based on React.js. And I know I haven't covered React here yet, but it felt wrong to leave that out. You can find both of the examples code in this GitHub repository. And let's start with the vanilla JavaScript UXP dialog first. This example comes directly from the PS starter template that is available from the UXP developer tool. And you still need pointers. There's a video that covers that. The base structure is really very bare, just some Spectrum UXP components. And let's cover what is officially documented first, which is the result of the first dialog button, the one on the left. In order to create a modal dialog, you need to have an actual dialog element in the body first. The dialog element itself is nothing special. In this case, I've used spectrum elements that we have seen in the past episode, like SP heading, SP divider, and SP body. Please know that, as I've also mentioned in the spectrum episode, a class of row or column in a div triggers the display to be equal to flex. So it's possible to use flexbox specific things such as justify content. This is the reason I've put that here. And the two SP button elements, they have an on-click handler, and both of them use the close method of the dialog that in turn is retrieved through document query selector, passing the ID, which is in fact the dialog string. And I hope this is not confusing, could have been anything. Please know that even if the markup code is there, the dialog doesn't pop up by default. In order to open it, um, let's have a look at the open dialog function that is triggered by the plugin dialog button. So the dialog is retrieved with the same query selector, but to open finally it, we have to run this UXP specific function called UXP show modal. And this accepts an option object that has a title property, which is the dialogue's title bar, a resize prop that controls the resizeability. And that can be either horizontal as a string, vertical, both or none. This might still be a little bit buggy. It was in the past when I tried. And also, finally, we have this size prop with a width and a height properties, which are quite self-explanatory, I hope. So to sum up, you add to the body one or more, why not, dialogue elements that you can get by ID, filled with whatever elements you need in that case, in the dialogue. You open the modal with UXP show modal, passing an option object, and you can close the dialogue with the close method. 
optionally passing a return value. And in this example, I've got close nope and close OK. So just two strings that I've passed as the return value. And also note that opening a dialog is an asynchronous process. Hence, open dialog is an async callback and it awaits for the UXP show modal. And this allows the result rest to be stored and logged afterwards. If the user cancels, a reason cancelled string is then returned. So this was the standard dialog. And the following one that I'm going to show you is, as I said, still undocumented. So please wait for the official documentation and or use with caution. Instead of the dialog element, there is a possibility to use an SP dialog, so a spectrum dialog, that allows some predefined styling as slots. You still place it in the body markup, but uh, the result is strikingly different. For one thing, the modal dialog is blocked on the screen center, so you cannot move it, and the panel gets darkened. There are several slots, such as the title, the icon, the description, and in this case, the button group. And I won't go too much into any of those because, as I've mentioned, it's better for us to wait for the official documentation. But one major difference is that you do not use UXP show model anymore. Instead, you set the open attribute of the Spectrum dialog with set attributes. And first you have to retrieve the dialog, in this case with query selector, passing the ID. And similarly, as you can see in the dialog's OK button's click handler, to close the dialog, you just remove open with remove attribute. Now you know this is possible and it will be soon documented. Play with it in Photoshop starting from version 22.2, I think. And speaking of versions, if you're wondering how the Photoshop UXP versions line fills, uh, you first have to require the UXP object, and then you uh, just change the inner HTML of that element, which is an SP detail, with this interpolated string that contains the UXP host version, so the Photoshop version, the host, and UXP versions UXP, which is the UXP version. OK, let's move to the second UXP example, which is a React.js one. As I said, I've not introduced React in the series yet. It is planned, but I wanted to include an example anyway. So this comes straight from the PS React Starter template from the UXP DevTool that I have cleaned of almost everything. I might assume that you know how to orient yourself in a React project, but if you do not and want to follow and play with it, please download the React example from this repository. And then you have to yarn install. Do not npm install because this won't deploy all the needed components. Not really clear to me why, but it doesn't work. Then you have to point the UXP developer tool to the manifest.json that sits in the project's dist folder. That done, if you want to modify the code and see the result, then you must npm run watch. And this will watch the source folder and bundle with Webpack on each save to the dist. And if you're not familiar with React, usually you code separate components that a bundler, such as Webpack, merges alongside with all the required dependencies in one or a few JavaScript files stops in the dist folder. OK, that done. Additionally, you need to watch that dist folder in the UXP dev tool so that it knows when to reload the plugin. So it's a two step process. You watch for changes so the Webpack compiles and then you watch for the compiled folder, which is the dist so that the UXP dev tool reloads it in Photoshop. The whole example is very simplified. It's just a dummy preferences dialog that doesn't really save any preference, uh, but it's able to hand it to the UXP panel. And later on, I will suggest you ways to improve it and make it, you know, real world example. Let's concentrate on the only two files that matter here, both in the source folder. One is the uh, dialogs, 
that sits in the panels folder, uh, which is the outer container in the UXP plugin panel. And the preferences, which is in the components folder, which is the content of the dialog that pops up. The dialog.js6 is not really fancy, but there are two or three things that I like to point out. First, the open preferences function is in charge of opening the dialog. Interestingly, it uses React DOM render method to render the preferences component, but first it needs to create a dialog element via create element stored in the preferences dialog variable and then append it to the body. Only then you are allowed to UXP show modal. So first you render the preference component, but you have to create a dialog and stick it into the body. And then finally you're allowed to open it. Also know that when the modal is closed, there is no really need to keep that dialog around. So you can just remove it. There's nothing really relevant to mention in the HTML part. It's just a very simple spectrum component structure with a bit of extra styles to keep things properly spaced. And so this is the preferences.js6. It's a stateless function component where I have used the state hook to keep track of the two bits of information, this fictitious smart objects and vector content uh, booleans that I want to pass along uh, to the panel on close. So see the on click handler for the OK button. Whereas the cancel returns just the same uh, reason canceled string that would be returned if user press the ESC key. And I've kept the two uh, matched for consistency, basically. And as I've mentioned in the previous video about Spectrum components, you always must use the ternary operator for checkboxes and set null when needed. Otherwise, that won't work and will drive you mad. Um, please also know that I'm using uh, inline handler functions uh, for the on input event just for convenience. It's not pretty to look at, but it works. Also know that, and this is peculiar to React.js, the style must be an object, hence the double set of curly braces. One set is to indicate inline JavaScript, the outer one, and the inner set of curly braces is for the object notation itself with camel case properties. And finally, you have to use class name in lieu of class, but remember this only in standard elements, not spectrum components. Spectrum components will expect the usual class. It, this is just a basic example. In the real world, you may want to, and you can do that as an exercise, say always store the values, for instance, in the local storage, which is the simplest case, and pass them to the preference components at creation to populate the model when it's shown the first time. But here the goal is just to focus on the dialog creation, so I've kept everything quite simple. Okay, let's now recap everything that we have seen so far. Dialogues as we knew them as script UI windows or the various simple pop-ups like prompt and confirm are now banned in UXP land. But UXP plugins can deal with modeless panels natively and can display modal dialogues as dialog elements via UXP show model. And then there are SP dialog elements, spectrum dialogues that are slightly different and are coming in the near future, so keep an eye at the official documentation. All in all, UXP can manage dialogues quite nicely, in my opinion, so the transition to the new system shouldn't be too big of a deal. If you find this content useful, please consider supporting me with a donation. There is a link in the video description and at the bottom of each article on my blog. Let me thank this group of fine persons who have shown their gratitude. Much appreciated. Stay safe, get the vaccine shot if and when you can. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.